Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sound Solutions podcast by MusicWorks, a hub for music therapists to discover solutions for their personal wellness and professional practice. Explore online continuing education, webinars, and other professional development resources on musictherapyandwellnesshub.com. That's musictherapyandwellnesshub.com. You can listen to more of our podcasts on SoundCloud, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Sound Solutions podcast. My name is Anna Flores, and today I have here with me on the show Rachel Gant, who is one of Resounding Gerard staff members, and Jeff Miller. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. We are excited to be here. So, Rachel, just tell us a little bit about what is Resounding Joy? Yeah, Resounding Joy is a nonprofit in the San Diego County area, and we provide music therapy and music wellness services throughout the county of San Diego to um, people of all ages, from infants all the way through end of life. Mm. And, a ver- and four specific programs, but um, in a variety of different settings. Yeah, so what are the different populations and programs that yeah. Resounding Joy offers? Yeah, the four main programs are Um, The Semper Sound program that provides uh, music therapy and support to active and retired military members. And then the Mindful Music program that provides music therapy um, support for older adults um, in assisted living care or who are homebound. Uh, And that's where a lot of our joy givers through our program uh, provide their volunteer time and needs. And uh, then we have our Sound Minds program that provides music therapy to uh, teen moms and their infants and for bonding and and for that like developmental support for those age groupings and then the last one we have is our healing notes program that provides um, music therapy support for patients and children uh, with chronic medical diagnoses at Rady Children's Hospital and then also uh, who are homebound um, through through hospice care as well. So you're a music therapist. Yes. And how do you see the role of music in helping these uh, children who are in the hospital or who are um, have a medical diagnosis? Yes, that's a very uh, large question, but I love it. <laughs> um, I think you know, as a as a music therapist, when I go in and I see patients, I'm I'm looking at so many different uh, levels of that patient from a whole person perspective. You know, I'm looking at, you know, how is their anxiety? Is it a new diagnosis? You know, how are they responding to being in the hospital? Because for a child, being in the hospital is um, really overwhelming a lot of times, and it can be very scary. They don't understand a lot of things. So I'm really looking at what can music therapy do to improve their experience and to um, help be part of that care team so that their medical um, experience and and length of stay in the hospital and all of that is improved. Mm. So, um, you know, one of the patient's parents that I work with kind of put it, put it simply because as a therapist I'm looking at all of these little things can I stabilize vital signs can I get our mood elevated can I do this and um, which all in the grand scheme of things um, as this mother beautifully put it is that uh, it gives these children a a time and a sense to just be kids and to have joy and connect with their family Mm -hmm. in an environment that it's really hard to do and sometimes that's eliminated from that yeah so for you, uh, you work at Rady Children's Hospital through mm-hmm. Resounding Joy, and so you're um, working with a wide variety of, of age uh, groups of different kids. And what are some of the biggest challenges uh, for patients and family mm-hmm. members in the hospital setting? Ah, that's a great question. Um, the biggest challenges, uh, I would say a lot of the biggest challenges come with the unpredictability of when things will happen, you know, waiting for a scan, waiting for, you know, this specific procedure, uh, not sure when it's going to happen. That really increases a lot of anxiety and stress. And in parents also and family members, not only just patients, because it's a lot of waiting. I'm not sure when this is going to happen. Uh, and, and a lot of those things are already scary in their nature. So all of that kind of wait time is tricky. And the medical staff don't really have as much control over that either. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's kind of in a waiting game. So that's I would say that's one of the really large challenges. Um, another challenge is, uh, you know, the, the kids that I work with are, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, are usually diagnosed with more chronic diagnoses, um, congenital heart disease or diagnoses that have 
put them in a situation in the hospital where they're on isolation and so they're stuck in their room the whole time. And Mm -hmm. um, that's really challenging, especially for young kids, to try to understand why they can't get out of their bed uh, and why they're stuck to this specific place. So in addition to all the medical interventions and treatment they're getting, they have all of these environmental circumstances that also make the stay more Mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I just want to put Jeff Miller on the line. And uh, Jeff, can you just talk a little bit about how you got involved with Resounding Joy? Sure. Um, so uh, our daughter, Ariana Miller, um, had congenital heart disease. And <clears throat> um, when she was probably about 10 or 11, um, she started getting ill. And so I think that was like around 2006. Um, and basically was put on a list for a heart transplant. Um, So she was essentially homebound at that point. I mean, she couldn't really go to school and be in uh, an environment where she could get sick because just a simple cold could kill her at that point. Um, And uh, so she was homebound, and um, we knew some people from our local church um, who worked with Resounding Joy, and they said, hey, can we come over and, you know, do some music therapy with her? And we really hadn't uh, had very little knowledge about what music therapy was at that point. And uh, so we started having some people coming over and visiting us. And and then we actually uh, had a music therapist that engaged with Ariana and started working with her on a regular basis, um, uh, Lindsay, who was her first music therapist. Um, and uh, we saw firsthand, basically, the effects of music therapy on our child. I and mean, she went from... Uh, a morning where she'd wake up and didn't want to get out of bed uh, to the music therapist was coming and she came downstairs and within a few minutes was laughing and singing and smiling and she was a kid again. And so it was a really, a, a really big impact on her. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Ariana never got her heart transplant. She passed away in 2008, um, but she did undergo you know, a fair amount of music therapy during that time. And so after she passed away, we wanted to bring this healing power to other kids in the community and we realized that there really wasn't any music therapy at Brady Children's Hospital in their ICU and especially for kids with heart disease. And so after she um, passed away, we created a, uh, a fund and we worked with Barbara Royer, the executive director of Resounding Joy, to create a program at uh, Brady Children's Hospital, which is now called the Ariana Miller Music with Heart Program which is what Rachel does, uh, and uh, provides music therapy to these kids. And we've expanded the program from not only kids with heart disease, but kids with other illness. Uh, and so that's, that's in, a, in a nutshell, how I got involved with the program. Hmm. Yeah, and that's really amazing to hear how, um, from your experience, which is really tragic and difficult to lose a child, but um, now we're able to provide music therapy services for so many other uh, kids and families who who need it. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I mean, obviously, anyone who loses a child, it's a devastating, uh, you know, thing to go through. Um, uh, but you try to make some sense out of it, and you try to take something from it, and say, hey, can there's there something we can take from this horrible tragedy and turn it positive? And so I think that's, you know, what we did with initially the Ariana Fund, and then combining with Resounding Joy to. Uh, create the Ariana Miller Music with Heart program. Uh, and so that, uh, and that's something that I think Ariana would have felt, you know, whether she lived or not, felt very important about was bringing music therapy to other kids as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So Rachel, how many individuals do you serve now on a regular basis? How many um, patients and families mm-hmm. are being served uh, through this program? Yeah. It depends on the day and depends on the patient need um, because referral reasons will bring us for shorter or longer periods of time with each patient. But on average, uh, we see about six to eight patients a day. And so that is about 30 or more patients a week. So that we're mm-hmm. that we're reaching. Some of them are unique. I only see one patient one time sometimes, and then sometimes we see them, you know, for a very long period over the course of their lives. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what are some of the biggest outcomes of music therapy for patients in the hospital? Yeah. 
Uh, there's lots of outcomes depending on what uh, patient we're working with, but some huge ones that we see very consistently are mood elevation, which directly impacts the rest of care. Uh, I can't even count how many times nurses come up to me in the middle uh, throughout the week and say, oh, wow, this is the most calm, relaxed, engaged, compliant this patient has been with taking medicine or for me coming in and doing you know, my check-ins on them. And it so not only improves their mood during their music therapy session, but it's continuing throughout their day and actually then impacts how positively they can interact with their medical mm-hmm. care. So that's mm-hmm. a that's a really big difference that we see uh, specifically with infants. Um, consistent vital stabilization and regulation. Um, also nurses saying, wow, this is the you know most stable and lowest that their vitals have been all day and mm-hmm. they finally get to go to sleep um, when they're in that stressful environment. Um, and also providing opportunities for parents and then patients to do songwriting. Um, I think those are some of the three top three big differences that we see. So really providing them an, an outlet for emotional expression and the song creation that then they can continue to use throughout their hospital stay to either elevate their own mood or to express their emotions this day, even if they can't have music therapy. Uh, and so really trying to integrate different coping skills and life skills that patients and families can use on a regular basis to make those outcomes more consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Resounding Joy is having an event coming up, so would one of you talk about that and, and what that event is and how it relates to these programs? Yeah, so our um, Heart of a Child concert is coming up on Saturday, uh, May 25th, and it is actually the primary funding uh, source that we have for our entire Healing Notes program that serves all of these patients at Radio Children's and then also uh, in home care when with patients who are not able to be in the, the hospital or in other environments. And so, Jeff, I think I'm gonna throw it to you to talk a little bit more about the event, if that's okay. Sure, okay. yeah. Um, so uh, we, we basically created the Heart of a Child concert um, uh, back in 2000, I think 2000, 10 was our first or 2011 was our first concert this is the eighth annual heart of a child benefit concert and the idea behind it was we needed um something to raise money for the music with heart program um but we also wanted to do something that allowed um young local performers an opportunity a venue to showcase their talents and um when we created this concert uh the the first year i think we raised twelve thousand dollars last year was our seventh concert and we raised just shy of $90,000 for the Music With Heart program. Um, so it's really become a pretty incredible event. Um, what we do is we recruit um, young musicians, vocalists, instrumentalists, all different kinds of genres of music, uh, rock, pop, country, jazz, classical, musical theater. We even have college a cappella. And what we do is um, we bring these kids in uh, and we put on this concert. Uh, the kind of our guidelines are kindergarten through college. So this year, our youngest performer is nine years old and our oldest performer is 21 years old. Um, So these are all young kids, but they are, uh, despite their their youth, um, they are incredibly talented kids. Um, We have kids that, multiple kids that have been on America's Got Talent, that have been, that have gone quite far on America's Got Talent. Um, We have kids that have been on multiple network television shows. They've they've been a regular series. Um, We have kids that have played Carnegie Hall, not just once, but multiple times. We even have uh, kids that have won national competitions. So, I mean, these are some of the best musicians you're going to see in the entire country. And uh, and so what we do is we put on this concert. We have uh, a, uh, a Pat Brown, a local celebrity host, and Hal Grant. He's a network director who are our MCs for the concert. Uh, and they do a really wonderful job of, of putting together this concert. And it's one of those things where... Um, you really have to see it to believe how incredible these kids are. I, I tell people that all the time, how incredible they are. And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they go to the concert and then they come up to me after the concert or an intermission and say, I had no idea how good this was going to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, and so it's, uh, it's a great event. Um, the concert's at seven o'clock on the 25th of May, but we also have a reception and silent auction starting at five thirty. Um, so it's really a, an evening of fun and entertainment. Uh, it's a once-year musical celebration, and uh, it's really an uplifting, uh, a very uplifting event for most people. I think that um, just watching these other kids using their talents to raise money for less fortunate children is a really powerful experience, and I think it touches the heart of a lot of people that come to the concert. Yeah, that's so awesome. I'm excited for it. What do you hope uh, will be the outcomes of this event? 
Well, obviously, every year we're trying to break our record, and every year we've we've done that. Um, so, uh, you know, three years, I think it was four years ago, we raised somewhere around like thirty-seven thousand dollars, and then we went up to seventy thousand, then we went up to eighty, and and last year we were just shy of ninety thousand. So, I mean, our, our our goal this year would be to raise a hundred thousand um, dollars. I think that's a pretty big goal, and and it's it's hard to it's hard to stay on that kind of a trajectory every year. Uh, keep going up and up and up like that. But um, I think, you know, we, we continue to build momentum every year. Our, our crowd size gets larger every year. I think last year we had about 350, um, and uh, we anticipate at least that size this year. The venue can hold about 470, 480. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we're at a point where we're starting to think about, hey, how can we sell this place out? And uh, so we're trying to get the word out. You know, we're, we're promoting it. Uh, we've already sold a lot of tickets. Uh, there still are tickets available, um, but it is a, uh, they're, they're all reserved seats. So uh, the sooner you buy the tickets, the better your seats are going to be. Um, but there still are some good seats available. Uh, and uh, this is the kind of venue, uh, well, I guess I didn't really talk about the venue at all. Um, th- this is the other thing that's really exciting about this year is um, uh, this year, for the first time, we're holding a concert at the Conrad Previs Performing, Ar- Performing Arts Center in downtown La Jolla, and this is a brand new world-class concert hall. It just opened at the beginning of April, so we are part of the inaugural season uh, of this concert hall, and it's it's an amazing, uh, intimate uh, concert hall with acoustics that are, like I said, world-class, uh, and it's a very modern. Uh, it's going to attract uh, more people as well. Um, and uh, we hope to have another successful event this year. Awesome. Rachel, where do you see the program going in the future? Well, you know, Jeff mentioned our goal is $100,000 this year, and just so that everyone know, um, that would mean a huge difference for our program because really uh, that would mean almost doubling and being able to have two full-time music therapists. And so, you know, going back to that number of patients that I was talking about that I get to see every week, um, being at about between 30 and 40, uh, you know, that now becomes 60 um, to 80 uh, patients that we would be able to see. And so that really is doubling the uh, the outreach and the impact that we would be having. So, you know, it is a lefty, it is a large goal, but in the grand scheme of things uh, in life, it, you know, if everyone gives a little bit, that is a, a reachable goal. And then that is reaching so many more families. So our uh, my goal is to be able to have two therapists uh, at the program and to expand outside of the ICUs and to really be able to support the continuum of care for patients throughout their medical journey and um, also to be able to support, uh, you know, Jeff mentioned that we have grown outside of just patients with cardiac diagnoses and uh, and so we are seeing patients with neurological diagnoses as well as um, hematology, oncology or cancer diagnoses and so um, my goal would be able to be uh, expand past that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for having us. It was a pleasure. For more information about Resounding Joy and the Heart of a Child concert, you can visit resoundingjoyinc.org. That's resoundingjoyinc.org. Also find us on Facebook and Instagram for social media updates and photos and videos of the event. Thank you everyone for listening to the Sound Solutions podcast. I'll see you next time.